That was an excellent comment from Gilles Rouguier on yesterday's tutorial. He asks, why do you use an offset instead of the actual position? And he just suggested to use this bit of code from the ready function instead of the content of the update camera one. And that's absolutely right. My logic was, we are looking to move the camera, to move the canvas below the camera rather. So to do that, I've calculated an offset and uh, calculated exactly how much we should move it. But when it comes to code, we don't have to use this logic. We can just always place the camera on top of the player and it will avoid that rounding error that would accumulate when we calculate a difference between two floating point values. Let's remove the last player position variable. Then we'll just ditch everything from the update camera function. We don't need it. And instead, we will use the content of the ready function. You can cut it, paste it in update camera. Now, if we try to place the camera on every frame like that, it will not work. Before we modify the update camera function, we have to call it once when the game is ready. We want to update the camera's position. Now with this code, if you try it, it worked in the ready function. It would place the camera on the character. But now when you move the character, the camera moves in the opposite direction. And as I told you, when we move the canvas, it's not like moving the camera directly. We offset the canvas instead. So we have to take the opposite values, minus player position plus screen size divided by two. And if we try the game, it works like before. However, we have about half the code. This shows the importance of peer reviews when it comes to code, just like with art or anything. It's extremely important because programming is a creative job. You always have to come up with your own solutions to problems and your teammates or your peers might have different ideas, sometimes better than yours. Also, when someone else looks at your code, they'll easily find improvements, while you, when you reread the thing, you have your logic and it's hard to modify it. Next, to get the display width and height, we can use the OS class and call the get window size function. It will get the size of the window, which is the same thing as creating a vector with the width and height globals. A last little test, it works just like before. What we just did is called refactoring and it's something we do all the time with both games and software development. It's when you modify and reorganize the code to make it a bit simpler, but also more future-proof. So thanks a lot to Gilles for his comments.